Hi guys, and welcome back. Today is Q&A day. So last week I asked for questions from you guys, and now it's time to answer some of them. I really enjoyed answering these and I got on a roll, so I'm actually going to split it into two different videos. Next week I'll be working on a new piece of artwork, but I will still be answering questions from you guys. So stay tuned for that. Uh, this piece that I'm working on right now, this 5x7 painting of this rose being shot, it's actually going to be at my shop, so if you'd like to own this little original, there's a link down in the description that will take you over there. And uh, yeah, I think that's about it, so let's just jump right in with some questions. So I have a couple from Becky, and the first one is, what is your Meyer Briggs personality type and do you think it fits you? And I took this just for you, Becky, I actually did not know, but it was fun to take the quiz. I had the INFJ-A, so the advocate is what it said it was, and uh, I actually did think it was very similar. I read through the the uh, strengths and the weaknesses that they had described for that kind of personality and a lot of the information about it, and I was like, yeah, that actually fit pretty well. So that was kind of fun and and also very interesting. It, it helps you kind of see things that, at least for me, that I would like to get better at and improve on. Uh, but also the other question is any tips for outlining a piece in watercolors? That's a great question. <laughs> I learned recently that having, and this is obvious it seems, but having a very sharp, fine, nice brush for your line work is going to go a long way. I was using liner brushes that I already had, so they were a bit older and they weren't nearly as nice as the one that I've been using now. And once I switched over to, I, I get a lot of my brushes from Trapel. They are by far one of my favorite brush makers. That's not a secret, but I got one of their liner brushes in the zero size. And because it's so sharp and new, that's another thing is that you can use these up and then they start getting frayed and then I'll use them for other purposes. But anyways, it's very sharp, it's very clean and I'm getting much better line quality line quality in my work now that I've switched to a better brush so so that also mixing the pigment stronger than you might think you'll need because you want it to be a line that covers up certain things behind it you want there to be as much pigment there as possible so that it is a little bit closer to an opaque mixture rather than a more transparent one like watercolors want to be and the last one is would you ever consider doing a patreon tier where you give a small original each month to someone I would love to do that actually. I've definitely considered it. I don't think it'll be anytime soon just because I want to get a little bit of traction on that project that I've talked about over on Patreon that I'm working on and I really want to get some of that stuff done and under my belt. But but I do think that it's something that will potentially be in the future. And Leah asks, who are some of the artists that you consider a big influence on your work? First off, Muka, of course, I. I adore how he rendered hair and clothing and just the flow of curves and and those really beautiful decorative elements that happen in his work. That's where I got a lot of a lot of inspiration and a lot of knowledge on how I wanted to approach that kind of rendering in my own work from from hair to clothing to to details like that. So that was a huge point for me when I really started studying how he worked, but I also absolutely love Ja Cooper's work. She, the way that she renders the human form is just so amazing to me. And I, I love the internal lines and shapes that she puts into that. And also Wiley Beckert, she has such an incredible understanding of the different planes of the human form. And oh, it's just a really incredible, sumptuous work. I love it. And I, I would love to be able to to figure out how to understand form like she does, like she understands it. So those are just a few of the artists that I love that I've also been trying to glean information from by studying their work. She also asks, how are you holding up in the current times with quarantine and everything? Luckily, pretty, pretty normally. <laughs> so I, I work from home. My husband, Lee, he also works from home and we are pretty much homebodies. We never really leave the house. So not a lot has actually changed with the quarantine for us personally. So that's really something that I've been grateful for that I've been able to just continue sticking to, to the schedules that I already have and just keep on working. And Joanne asks, are there any books or films that have inspired your work or a single piece? There are 
so many little elements that I like to pick out of things that I'm currently watching or finding really inspiring and putting it into my work. Of course, there's a lot of things in Studio Ghibli films that I love. Howl's Moving Castle in particular is one of my all-time favorites, so I love the type of details that's in that piece. So there's just a lot of little things that I can never remember after I'm done with it, but really did spark that. But one that really did have a lot of strong ties with a book is my Twisted Fate piece, which when I, I did that, I talked about this a lot, but it was inspired pretty heavily by the story and the atmosphere and my interpretation of the book Katura and Lord Death, which is one of my all-time favorite books. I love it. I finally got my own copy of that book like two weeks ago, so I need to read it myself again. But, but yeah, that one is a piece that's near and dear to my heart because it's so tied to with, tied to the book that I love so much. And Joanne also asks, would you ever publish an art book of Danica Sills outside of Inktober ones? Absolutely, I would love to. I love making books. That process is so enchanting for me. I love being able to hold it and, and create something tangible like that. And I would love to be able to do some that actually have color in it. So for sure that's going to happen at some point in my career, hopefully not too long from now. I don't have any specific plans, but it's, it is certainly a consideration that I have taken. And we've got a bunch of questions from Adam, so I'm going to try to work through as many as I can from him. But we've got first, how's Hazel doing? Hazel's my cat, by the way. She is doing pretty all right. She keeps waking me up very early lately, though. Right now, she's sitting next to me on her little chair and hanging out with me and sleeping. So she's doing all right for a cat, I think. <laughs> Would you make a book out of your sketches? Uh, I do not do enough nice sketches to make a book of it. Maybe way down the road if my work process changes enough where I actually have nice sketches and enough of them to make a book, I would probably love to do that. But that is that is a thing for future me to ever consider, but there's not enough material at this point. And would you ever make a video about art pieces that you haven't finished and talk a bit about why you haven't finished them or pieces you finished but you don't like and why? Uh, I actually have done a couple videos, I think, in the past where I wasn't able to finish it or it just wasn't working. And I did do a video just talking about it or talking about what I would have changed for things that I, I didn't like and things that were just more of a struggle than that piece really warranted. But yeah, I I love being able to talk about the the more negative sides of when a piece doesn't work as well, because I think that that's just as important as going over the things that do work and the pieces that I love or you love as you're working on things. It's it's very it's very healthy, I think, to be able to approach the the failures and see those as just part of the process, as part of your artistic timeline. So so yeah, if there if there ends up being a piece coming up that that I'm not able to fix or I I end up hating, then I probably will do a video and I probably will break it down and talk about what I needed to do to fix it. Do you have a time plan for each day? So basically, yeah, my, my schedule that I give myself is pretty loose, but I like to wake up and spend like an hour, an hour and a half just kind of warming up to the day, getting ready, relaxing a little bit. And then I'll spend any time before lunch doing as much of the admin stuff as I can. So responding to emails, packaging orders for the shop, planning things out, planning out my day, things like that. And then I will eat lunch. And then after lunch, I'll finish anything admin stuff that had to get done that didn't get done. And then the rest of the day is all creative time, which I love. I love being able to get all of the, the stuff that can kind of intrude on just sitting down and painting out of the way and done and checked off. And then I can spend all that time just painting or sketching or planning in a more artistic way. How do you recharge yourself? This is one that I have really struggled with, but I think I'm finally figuring myself out, figuring out what I need. So I, I need to make sure that I schedule a certain amount of time in where I can relax, but not just relax because I found that I used to just kind of wind down into just staying at my computer and putting on some random show and just vegetating out for the rest of the night. And that pretty much never made me feel better. It never made me feel more refreshed or relaxed. So when it's time for me to 
stop working, I, I actually need to be very mindful about what I'm actually doing so that when I step away from that and get back to work, I feel really recharged. So some of the things that, that I like to do, which most people <laughs> like to do, is I like to play video games and read books that are good. And yeah, it's just about taking the time for me to make sure that I'm choosing activities that I'm actually enjoying. And sometimes those same activities I'm not enjoying and I'm just I try to not coast through things and realize, okay, if I'm, I'm not enjoying this, then I need to stop and I need to do something else that will recharge my batteries. And when do you feel the most inspired to work? I don't think there's like a time in the day that I feel most inspired to work. Usually I feel most ready to, to get to painting after I've done a bunch of like tasks. I've gotten things done, I've checked them off my list and I just feel so productive. I just wanna flood that right into working on creative things and being really productive with that kind of stuff. Do you think you work better when you're happy or when you're full of energy or when you feel down? This is actually a really interesting question. I've thought about it a bit. I I don't know. I think that I get different types of work out of different moods. I have found that I, I think towards the end of the day when I'm feeling just a little bit lower on, on the energy spectrum where I, I've used up a lot of it, I find that sometimes that's when I can really just focus the best. So when I really just want to get down to work and I want to make it happen. Sometimes that's when it really happens. But I find that when I'm feeling really motivated and full of energy and happy and excited, that's when I can make bigger leaps of, of planning things out, of getting a lot of sketches done for a big projects. So yeah, it's kind of a mixture of things. And we have a bunch of questions from Shasta as well. So thank you so much. I'm going to try to get through these as much as possible. Uh, where do you find yourself getting your inspiration from? This is kind of a, maybe an abstract, strange answer, but I, I think that I get my most inspiration from the fact that I deeply want to find that, that true art style subject matter that, that says what I want to say. <laughs> that, that's me, I guess, that becomes an extension of myself. And I don't think I've really realized that I've gotten closer to it and that's really exciting, but the inspiration to keep working and to keep trying to figure that out comes from that, from the fact that I want to be able to create a body of work that just feels like me and like I'm saying what I want to say. So yeah, from, from I guess from that, where I haven't quite figured it out and that's exciting when I can get something that's a little bit closer to that. Um, where is my accent from? I never consider myself with an accent, but I, I grew up in a few different places. My parents are from Idaho and Indiana. So a mixture of those two, I suppose. Do you ever find yourself looking at your art, which is amazing, thank you, and just losing the inspiration to finish? Luckily, no, but I think the only reason that I don't run into that is because I tend to work at a very quick turnover time. So I sketch it out, I paint it, and I finish it basically in like two to three days. So there's not really a lot of time for me to step away from it and to have those feelings of urgency to finish it fade away. So I think that if I were to step away from pieces, it would be harder to get back into it and to still want to finish it. But but yeah, I think that that helps a lot, just being able to go and get it done and then have a finished piece. How do you motivate yourself past artist block? The one thing that seems to always help me is I just sit down and I do studies. I, I just practice, I do figure drawing, I draw the face. I, I try to figure out light and shadow and doing that homework type stuff. It makes me feel productive. I feel like I'm learning. And then eventually I tend to get out of that rut that I'm in. And I feel like I want to get back into doing things that are more imaginative. Do you have a day job besides being an artist? Nope. This is my full-time job, which is pretty cool. That was my dream job as a kid. So I, I feel really very lucky and very grateful to be in that position. Uh, if you could visit any country, where would it be and why? Ooh, that's a great question. I don't think I have a single answer. I have always wanted to travel. I love, I love thinking about it. Hopefully that'll happen for me someday in the future. Of course, Japan is up there on the list. I would love to visit that place, that place, that country. Uh, but yeah, I, I always wanted to go to Italy. 
Actually, I would adore going to Italy and being able to go to the museums and see all the beautiful artwork there and see all the ancient buildings. I, I just, I love places that have really ancient architecture. That's something that I think would be really cool to see. So basically everywhere, <laughs> anywhere that I could go. And what is your favorite project or piece that you've ever made? My favorite project is probably my first Inktober book, just because that was such a monumental thing. It was so much work and I was so proud of it. I still am. And it, it did open me up to being able to work on larger things like that. And my favorite piece, there's, there's definitely a few, but the one that I think will always be really near and dear to my heart is my Skull King piece. I love that one. I feel like when I when I did make it, it just really transcended everything else that I was making at the time. And I still feel like I look at it and I love it. So that's always going to be one of my all time favorite pieces. How do you feel about your older work looking back? I actually feel really grateful for it <laughs> and proud of it. Proud that it was something that I made and it took me closer to where I'm at now. So I, I love looking back at my old work. I, I just get a lot of a lot of happiness from that, <laughs> knowing that I did it and that I'm, I'm going on the right direction and knowing that, that the stuff that I'm making now, it's going to go in this tote of all of my old artwork. And eventually I'm going to look back and think, oh, wow, I'm glad I did it then. And now I can be where I'm at now. And where do you see your work channel and self in five to 10 years? I don't know. I've been thinking about this quite a bit lately about what my goals are, what I really want to see myself as in the future. But I think really just the few things that I know is that I want to be able to create a body of work that's really cohesive so that every single thing that I do, I feel like really stands true to what I want to be making and, and groups together well. So I have a great portfolio and uh, I don't know, I, I would love to be able to travel. That's a personal one. And I would like to be healthier, but that is a personal, that's also a personal one. But yeah, the, the more career goals for farther into the future. I don't know yet. I've been really trying to think about it and figure it out and try to put it into more concrete terms so I can actually make goals and figure that out and make plans. And a couple questions from Polycraftual. <laughs> uh, first one is about doing longer videos that have a bit more detail on inspiration ideas process. I would absolutely love to do that. And she's specifically asking about for the project that I'm talking about and working on over on, on Patreon. And yes, I am definitely planning on that. I'm, I will be showing a lot more of what goes into that as soon as I start getting more traction on that. Also, what is your ultimate favorite watercolor color? It depends on, on my mood as I work through it, but probably the one that's always going to be at the top is Rose of Ultramarine from Daniel Smith. It granulates, it's beautiful. I love the pigments that are in it. it. It's one of my all time favorites. And what is your favorite dinosaur? Definitely the Velociraptor. It was the coolest when I watched Jurassic Park. I still love it. And knowing that the actual dinosaur was actually like little dog size just makes me love it even more. Thank you guys so much for all of the questions. And of course the questions that I'll get to next week while I work on a new piece. Uh, and I do have this original painting at my shop. Like I mentioned, there's a link down in the description that'll take you over there. And of course I want to give a massive thank you to all of my patrons over on Patreon. You guys are extremely amazing. I can't thank you enough for all of the support that you do give me over there on Patreon. I, I wouldn't be able to do this without you. So thank you sincerely. And uh, yeah, that's about it. So I'll be back next week with some more art video content. Thank you guys for watching and I'll see you then.